Hello class. Today we're going to take evaluating expressions one step farther. We're going to evaluate them using a t-chart. So our standard that we're looking at right now, and this is going to be one of our best friends over the next few weeks, is to represent linear relationships using verbal descriptions, tables, graphs, and equations that simplify to the form y equals mx plus b. Later on next week, we're going to find out what this y equals mx plus b is all about. But today we're going to talk about a linear relationship using a table. Okay, so those, that's going to be what we're talking about. So let's review what we've done so far with evaluating expressions. We know that to evaluate an expression means plug in some values and do the math using order of operations, or commonly called plug and chug. So let's look at this first one here. This first one says, and remember, anytime you're looking at one of these expressions, I want you to read it to yourself with operations in mind. So it tells you what to do. Gives you a set of instructions, basically. So this one says three times whatever X is plus Y. Okay, so we're gonna take this three X plus Y and plug in our associated values to those variables. So that's gonna say three times X, which is six, plus y is negative five. Now we're gonna use order of operations to finish out the problem. So three times six gives us 18, and then plus negative five. 18 plus negative five will give us 13. Now, this second one's a little bit tougher, okay, because it's got a big division bar. So this one actually says two times the value of x minus three times the value of y, get an answer to that, and then divide it by the value of z. Okay, so we've got two times our x value is six minus three times our y value is negative five. And I'm gonna divide that by four. Okay, so now we use order of operations to finish this out. So I need to completely get the top part done before I can divide by four. So we got two times six gives us 12 minus three times negative five gives us negative 15. And then I'm gonna divide that by four. Well, we see a minus a negative, so we know that's gonna to turn to plus a positive. So that really ends up being 12 plus 15, which is 27 divided by four. So now we take our calculator and we do the math. 27 divided by four equals 6.75. And yes, it's okay to have a decimal answer. Not a problem. You plug it in, you evaluate. Now, today what we're gonna look at is what we have been doing and what we did in those problems is I gave you some set values for your variables, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and I changed a bunch of the expressions and said, evaluate all these expressions for those values. So when we evaluated expressions so far, we changed the expressions and kept the values of the variables the same. But what if I do it the other way? What if I give you multiple values for one expression? Something like this. What if I gave you the single expression 2x plus 3, but I want you to evaluate it for x values of 0, 3, negative 2, 1, negative 1, and 2. Because that x is a variable. So if it's a variable, its value can change. And since this is not an equation, I don't have a set value for that x that I'm looking for. So it can be anything. So if I wanted you to evaluate 2x plus 3 for all of these values, here's what you would do. Okay, I would take the zero, I would plug it in. Two times zero plus three, and then do the math. Well, two times zero is zero, plus three is three. Then I'd go to the next one. Two times three plus three. <coughs> well, two times three is six, plus three gives you nine. Well, got the next one. Two times, now it's negative two, and then plus three. Well, two times negative two is negative four. <coughs> negative four plus positive three gives me negative one. Okay, and we could do all the rest of them the same way. Okay? And we'd end up with various values. But that seems like an awful lot of work, doesn't it? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a way to organize it? So it would be really nice if we had a way to organize our answers. And believe it or not, we do. And what we're going to use today is a T-chart to organize that information. So let's see if we can evaluate this using a T-chart. Because believe it or not, this is the same exact problem. Okay, if you were to look back, I've got 0, 3, negative 2, 1, negative 1, and 2. All I did was take these values and put them in order and put them in the T-chart. Because what algebra really is, is the study of patterns. And that's what we're going to look for 
whenever we have this T-chart. Right now, this T-chart, and it's kind of weird to say this, but this T-chart speaks to me. Let me share with you what it says. It says, if, if x is negative 2, then 2x plus 3 is what? So it asks you a question. So our job is to find out what is the what. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 2 and we're going to plug it into this expression. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So I take the negative 2 and I go 2 times negative 2 plus 3. So there's the, the work. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3 gives me negative 1. Now my x value changes. So now it says if x is negative 1, then 2x plus 3 is what? So I do it again. 2 times, now it's negative 1 plus 3. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 gives me positive 1. Well, now my x value changes again. So if x is 0, then 2x plus 3 is what? So I plug it in. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. Now I'm hoping what you begin to see is that there is a pattern to what's happening with my answers. If you'll notice, go negative 1 to 1, well, I add 2. Go from 1 to 3, I add 2. So what do you think the next one's going to do? Well, by previous answers there, it's going to add 2, and I'm going to get a 5, and then a 7, and then a 9. And those are probably all the same values that we came up on the first time that we worked it. But because we put these in order and we wrote them in a particular format, we were able to see a pattern in our answers and we didn't have to do all of the work. So let's see if we can do another one. Okay, so here is the next one I'd like for us to try. Now, what does it say again? If you remember, if x is negative 2, then 3x minus 2 is what? Okay, so hopefully you remember that because it asks you a question. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in this problem is I see that there's a minus. So I'm going to change that minus to a plus, next number to its opposite. That'll help out as we're doing our work. So the first time we have an x, we have a negative 2. So I'm going to come over to the side and I'm going to do the work. 3 times negative 2 plus negative 2. So we just plug that x value into our expression. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus negative 2 gives me a negative 8. Now my x value changes. It's now negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 plus negative 2. Well, 3 times negative 1 gives me negative 3. And then plus negative 2 gives me negative 5. Okay. Now my x is now 0. So 3 times 0 plus negative 2. 3 times 0 is 0. Plus negative 2 gives me negative 2. After working 3 x values, you should be able to determine a pattern because it does take three in order to find the pattern. So what are we doing? Well, on this one, I'm adding three. And from the second one to the third one, I'm adding three. So what will I do to the next one? Add three. So negative two plus three gives me one, and then one plus three gives me four. So to evaluate an ex expression using a T-chart, all we're doing is taking our X values, multiple X values, and plugging it into the expression. Tomorrow what we look at is, what am I getting when I'm doing this T-chart? What happens with this? Well, believe it or not, something very special will actually happen. So, in order to evaluate an expression using a T-chart, all you do is plug in an X value into the expression and evaluate. So until next time,